Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here, and this is uh, five reasons why people know instantly that you're an INFJ. Now, while people might like to dispute my personality type online, I've found that very few people who have met me and interacted with me in real life would ever consider to dispute my personality type. And there are a few key giveaways I think that make people instantly recognize me as an INFJ in real life situations. One is, for example, that uh, as an INFJ, um, I will have and I will be very comfortable with uh, moments of silences. So one thing I notice is, for example, even when I just met a person, if we're walking around and if I see I read a beautiful space and environment or in nature, I will tell the other person, let's stop for a minute and let's just take in the situation. And I'll just be quiet and I'll just observe. And I'll just like take in the moment. And they'll be like really like confused. They'll be like, uh, should I say something? You know, why is he silent? Why is he not saying anything? And for me, it's just a matter of, you know, taking a time to just check in with myself and to uh, detach from the situation. I enjoy the thrill of uh, just being able to disappear in myself and to be able to escape into my own world for a while. And I think that's something uh, <laughs> that surprises other people. Also, how I make them do the same thing, how I make other people find that space in themselves, even if they are really stressed or even if they are really uh, tense or even if they're really nervous in a specific situation, how I will just make them calm down. And that brings me to step number two, or rather <laughs> reason number two why people instantly recognize me as an INFJ and perhaps also you. Uh, and that is that uh, I can be very intense in terms of eye contact and attention. So one thing I noticed is that when people talk, I give them 100% of my attention. I listen to them. I look straight into their eyes for long periods of time. And I just sit and I just nod and I just hear them out and I'm just in their world with them. So I'm really in that presence and I'm really in Zen in the moment with that person and I really enjoy that space. And why it's intense for other people is, you know, what is it like to feel like you're being looked at by another person? What does it feel like to be fully seen by another person? What does it feel like when another person is fully inside your mind with you, like just being there with you and just carrying your thoughts and your experiences with you? And um, yeah, like I would say that's very intense and I'd say that's very unnerving and it's like even to the point where I think sometimes people feel a need to put up strong boundaries around me because they are not used to getting such attention. So I noticed that that's uncomfortable for people. Uh, reason number three why people note this and spot that you're an INFJ is that the, the conversation topics you go into are quite intense and quite emotionally deep. So. I'm quite comfortable even with a stranger to talk about deep topics and often I will share of my personal experiences in relationships, personal struggles and existential questions. One thing I noticed is that I will ask people a question such as what is something that you are thinking about right now in your head that you haven't fully finished, something that you're pondering about, something you don't know the answer to. And what I do with this is I'm trying to get people to talk about something that is outside their script, you know, because most people will go to a set specific stereotypical shallow topics, you know, they'll want to present themselves a certain way, they'll want to be seen a certain way, they'll have rehearsed topics, you know, sometimes people come to me, you know, and I can tell that they've got rehearsed lines and questions and things they want to say and uh, like, I want to get away from that because I'm not so interested in what you already know and what you already feel about yourself and what you already want and plan to say. So what I'm trying to get to is uh, to get you to um, talk about things that you don't know, because that's the interesting part, right? That's where we can actually help each other, right? So if there's something you don't know that you're pondering about, well, I want you to talk about that. I want you to feel less alone. And I want you to feel less alone by being able to share like the things that you feel like you can't share with anyone. Point number four that people recognize in me as an INFJ is that uh, I give a lot of space to you and to your personal identity. I make people feel like they can be themselves and that's like my number one 
most important priority whenever I meet another person, and that is getting them to feel like they can be 100% themselves. And one way I do that is by being a chameleon for the other person. So what I have learned is that if you want another person to uh, be themselves, you have to give them a canvas that they can project themselves onto. And so that doesn't mean that I take on the personality of the other person. In fact, actually what I notice is that sometimes it's about more mirroring the other person and their experiences. So being able to uh, talk in a tone and in a way that allows the other person to just be themselves and to just open up and to say something that is going on and uh, to create a space for them to be able to be themselves because a lot of people are going to like block you from being yourself a lot of people are going to put up resistance are going to put up challenges and questions and they're going to talk in a certain way that doesn't allow you to really talk the way you want to talk so if another person is very argumentative for example you might find it hard to be your normal peaceful or harmonious self and you might feel a need to be more closed or more defensive for example so one way i deal with this is just uh, giving people a space to be themselves and that's like by also making myself and showing a side of myself that other people can uh, identify with and connect with so making people feel like wow i can identify with and connect with this person is like really important so one comment I got recently was that I felt like a long lost brother and I thought it was such a compliment and I thought that was such a sweet thing to say because it feels like hey we just talked for like a few hours you know that day and uh, so it feels like an honor to be seen that way and that that other person feels that way so that's something that I feel really good about so yeah that's probably something that a lot of INFJs might relate to. Um, number five is that um, you're not uncomfortable with either positive or negative topics. INFJs can go both high and low. And so INFJs are more than comfortable with uh, talking about difficult topics and talking about heavy topics like depression, loneliness, suicide, whatever it is, you know. There is no topic that is not allowed for an INFJ. And what that means is that ultimately when you're with an INFJ, you can talk about anything. Like you can have any form of opinions, you can have any form of beliefs, and INFJ will listen and will observe and will accept that and will see that as your space, as where you are at right now, um, and give you space to be that kind of person and to have those kind of beliefs. Ultimately, I don't feel like I'm here to judge anyone or to make anyone feel a certain way about themselves. I'm just trying to get people to understand themselves and other people better. I see that as my life cause and that's how I look as an INFJ. Now, you're free to feel completely differently as an INFJ and to identify differently and to experience yourself differently. And we're all unique people. Um, we're so many people on this planet and everyone with a unique way of development and experience. So let me know in the comments down below which points you relate to and which ones uh, that have gotten you instantly recognized as an INFJ. Thank you for watching.